Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. In this video, I will be going over inverse functions. Uh, obviously, if we're going over inverse functions, you will need to know what functions are. So if you don't know what functions are, or if you need a refresher on functions, there will be a link in the description of this video, uh, or you can click the i in the top right hand for the same link. All right, so inverse functions. A good place to start is just a little bit of review of regular functions. So, let's take f of x equal to 2x, where f is a function that takes an input from d, which in this case is the domain, and maps it to r, which is the range. So, Let's do a little bit of mapping for this. So if we have an input of negative 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. For negative 1, negative 1 times 2, negative 2. 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 4. So this is a pretty straightforward mapping. The inverse function which is usually written something like this. So, <clears throat> for the inverse of y, y being in r, it is equal to x, where f of x is equal to y. Uh, this is the notational definition of an inverse function. Um, to explain it, we can go back to the mapping. So if we take the inverse of negative 4, what we do is we find negative 4, we follow the arrow back, and we get to negative 2. And just to check, f of negative 2 is negative 4. So, yep, f inverse of negative 4 is negative 2. Um, and we could do this as many times as we want. f inverse of, say, 0. We find 0, we follow it back, and we get 0. So, f inverse is of 0 is 0. Now, you can also find the inverse algebraically uh, instead of always drawing out a mapping. So, let's do that. So let's start off with the inverse. Let's set it equal to g of x, where, because this is how the inverse function works, g will go from r to d. So it takes an input from here, and it maps it back over to d. All right. so. Let's first take f of x, which is equal to 2x. And we'll set this equal to y. So there are a couple ways to do this algebraically. I'm going to show you the way I personally do it. So what I do is I swap the variables. So everywhere I see an x, I will make it a y. And everywhere I see a y, I will make it an x. And then you just solve for y. So easy enough. And so this is g of x. So let's test it to make sure we did it right. g of 2. Let's see. So we take 2 over 2, and we get 1. And if we follow our mapping, 2, we end up back at 1. And we can do the same thing with, say, our original one, negative 4. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. And we find negative 4, we get back to negative 2. So. Now, 
in order to check your work and make sure you actually did find the inverse function, there is a simple relation between a function and its inverse. And it's if you take f g of x, where g of x is the inverse of f, this is equal to g of f of x, which is equal to x. So let's try it out. f of x is 2x, g of x is x over 2. So f of g of x is f of x over 2 which is 2 times x over 2, which equals x. So that checks out. g of f of x, 2x, equals 2x over 2, which is x. All right, so we've checked that this condition is true. So we have shown that g of x is, in fact, the inverse of f. All right, so let's move on to a slightly more complicated function. All right, so let's do the same thing with the original one and let's start mapping. So two goes to four, one, when you square it goes to one, zero, square root of zero, negative 1, when you square that, you get positive 1. And negative 2, when you square that, you get positive 4. So this is a slightly more complicated map, but let's see. So let's take f inverse of 0. We find 0, map it back, and we get 0. So that's fine. But if we try, say, f inverse of 1, we get either 1 or negative 1, which isn't good because functions can only have one output for each input. So in this mapping, f inverse is not a function, which isn't good. This is because. Um, x squared is not one to one. One to one meaning that for every output you get one input, and oh, sorry, for every input you get one output, and for every output there is only one input. Um, and that is a true statement among all functions. So f of x has an inverse. Uh, only if f of x is 1 to 1. So we can still find an inverse, but we have to make this function 1 to 1. And how we do that is we define x to only be greater than or equal to 0. And by doing that, what we're doing is we are restricting the domain of this function. So negative 2 and negative 1 go away. And so we're only left with 0 mapped to 0, 1 mapped to 1, and 2 mapped to 4. Um, so this has um, a well-defined inverse function, which um, hopefully you should see, is just uh, square root of x. Now, let's briefly go over graphing functions and their inverses. So with the original, um, the original example, um, I'll graph the two functions. OK, so the original function of f of x is graphed here, 2x. Um, and the inverse is in green. It's x over 2. Um, and this dotted line right here is the line y equals to x. And the reason this is graphed is because 
um, graphically, the relation between f of x and its inverse is that its inverse is the reflection of f of x over this line. So every point here is just goes straight across the line. Um, and so going back to restricting the domain of x squared, let's graph x squared and its inverse. All right, so f of x is x squared in the blue, which is the normal parabola you see. And when we reflect this over the uh, line y equals x, we get a graph that looks like this. And with, um, if you use the vertical line test for functions, you'll see it does not pass it, um, <clears throat> meaning that this inverse is not a function. And so, just like what we did here, we just restrict the domain. And so, we get rid of all of the negative ones, all of the negative values of x squared, or of x, sorry, and restrict the domain only to x greater than or equal to zero. And by doing that, we get rid of this. And so, we get g of x equal to the square root of x, which is what you get when you graph the square root of x. All right, and that is inverse functions. For more videos um, on precalculus basics, you can click on the link right here. To subscribe to our channel, you can click here. To visit our website, centerofmath.org, you can click here. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can hit the I in the top right-hand corner for all of the same links. Thank you.